Welcome to the Next Pro Show. Uh, this is a show that will be providing complete coverage of the Puma Next Pro Circuit. I am one of your hosts. My name is Corbin. Um, our other host, my other host is Shanku. We will be the ones that will be the main folks rocking with you throughout this journey here on the show. Um, but we'll be sharing more about ourselves as we keep going um, with each episode. But just for now, let's kind of give you the, the the cliff notes of who we are, kind of our experience, um, all that jazz. So, Shanku, we're actually going to start with you. Um, first of all, I'm happy doing this with you, man. Um, can you share with the folks just a little bit about you? Yeah, Corbin, I'm excited to do this. Um, so I started with Next Pro last summer as an intern, and then I had a great experience with that. And this past September, I moved out to Oklahoma, where I was the lead scout for Oklahoma and Kansas, actually. So I've been doing that for the past five, six months, and I was just became the regional scout now and decided to travel and provide exposure for these talented kids on our circuit. What about you, Corbin? Tell me a little bit about yourself. That's pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, so this is my first um, run with Next Pro and, and working um, within the circuit. I'm excited to do some scouting, obviously, to be the host uh, or be one of the hosts of the show. Um, my experience really comes from more of like a podcasting background, um, writing. I've done some writing for SB Nation, for Fan Sided, editing there, um, have hosted a variety of podcasts over the last couple of years. You know, just like all of us here love basketball and the opportunity to do that in a different capacity here with some more hands on um, experience and doing more like scouting in that way was appealing and to work with some great people. So this has been so far a lot of what I'm looking forward to or a lot of what I've been looking forward to doing. And I'm just excited to see where this goes. But this show is one of those things. So really excited to get that going here with you, Shanku. And yeah, I mean, we're going to go into more of what Next Pro is, um, which will be helpful for me as I'm also still learning about that. And we have a good line of a guest here to kind of break all that down in the various capacities with, with which Next Pro works. Um, but we thought we'd start with none other than the president of Next Pro himself. So we're happy to bring on um, Matt Reynolds. Uh, to join the show and kind of ask him some questions just to learn more about Next Pro on, on a macro level. So, Matt, um, welcome to the show, and, and thank you for joining. Good to see you. Yeah, happy to be here. Excited for this. I think this is going to be a really cool wrinkle that we add in for uh, you know a lot of bonus coverage for kids, so it's going to be awesome. Absolutely. All right, so I, I guess the first question I have to start with is, how did you get into making basketball your career? I mean, more of your background, just – your story up to this point, you can give us the, you know, the curated version, but um, really interested in just kind of getting a little more um, background on, on yourself. Yeah, honestly, if you would have told me I would be doing what I'm doing today, I probably wouldn't have believed you. At a young age, I loved basketball, but I loved a lot of sports. I was a football guy, a, a baseball guy, and a basketball. Uh, those are the three main sports for me. Um, baseball was by far my best sport as far as uh, as a player. <laughs> Um, and so I, I definitely gravitated more towards that as, as we went through, ended up going to college uh, originally for that. And then uh, injuries and things just, you know, happened and kind of led me at 19 to basically go into sports broadcasting, which is what I thought I would be doing, um, you know, honestly. And, and from that, stumbled into a, a gig with a company to where they were very good to me and taught me a lot about the grassroots scene. I think at that same time, you know, this is a little bit over a decade ago, there was a lot of changes in grassroots basketball and a lot has changed since then. It's grown, uh, some for the better, some for the worse. You know, people can debate that. But I think overall, I do think it's grown for the better. And especially the kickoff of social media at that time, Twitter was becoming a huge thing. So there was just a lot of things working in that. And uh, I was a radio show host in Oklahoma for a while in Tulsa and then with CBS Sports in Oklahoma City. And during that time, I was working with a tournament business and just as an operator, kind of learning that side of it, as well as the media side, the articles and similar to what you guys are doing here, uh, you know, anything that you could have to help the athletes through social media. So through that, over the last 10 years, I really found that my area of expertise that I was best at was uh, putting together great events to where you get college coaches in the gym. And it started for me with the D2 and AI JUCO coaches, D3 coaches, which they can be out at more events than just, you know, the NCAA Division One coaches and has led into this career now to where, you know, obviously we target colleges of all levels, everybody from the top of the top to, um, you know, a D3 and AI JUCO opportunity that helps kids, again, 
ultimately it's all about getting their school paid for. Absolutely. And Matt, I've, I've been with this company for about a year now. And I just want to ask you, when you started this company three, three, four years ago, what was your vision, both long-term? What are some of your goals for this season? And also, where do you see the company headed in the next five, five, 10 years? Ultimately, I think when we started this company, it was about what is the best way to be innovative in the industry? How do we help more opportunities come for kids? It started, of course, on the guy's side, but you know, you look into this year, we obviously have launched a girls circuit and that's going to continue to get bigger. And we're very excited about that. Mm -hmm. But the long-term overarching goal continues to remain the same even today, which is get kids the most exposure. What do they want to play on? Let's just call a spade a spade. For those out there that want to beat around the bush, they can. I'm not one of those people. They want to play on a shoe circuit, and there's power in a shoe circuit. And I, I think if you look at what we've put together with Puma Hoops and their great team over there, um, they are obviously very talented in what they do. They've got a great product, uh, whether it comes down to shoes or the crazy shirt I'm wearing tonight. There, there's a bunch of stuff that they do that's very fun. And I think kids gravitate to that. They've got some great athletes at, at Puma and are going to continue to build. So being able to mix in with the company with them and become the official shoe circuit for Puma, uh, both with the next circuit and the Pro 16 circuit, I think for us sets us apart. Uh, we're in a group of, of four. And a, as we pursue to be you know, one of the best and continue to climb the ladder, obviously, look, we get it. We're the new kids on the block. Uh, this isn't our first rodeo, however, and I think that people will see through our circuit, we will continue to be innovative. We'll push things. And I mean, what better way to give an example of this show? You know, no one's doing a weekly show like we are and Shanku, uh, both you and Corbin are, are going to be great in leading this with player interviews, player analysis. And I guarantee you there will be college coaches of all levels. They watch this show as, as they go through it. There's going to be elements of course that have highlights whole nine yards. So again, that's really our MO is just to be innovative and to help the athlete in any way that we can. Definitely like that for sure. Um, and I guess that kind of going, you kind of went to the vision here. I, I kind of want to know just like your, your day to day. I mean, the title, obviously president, that's a lot that goes into that, but what is, I don't know, the day in the life of what you do. I mean, can you share any insight as to how much prep you have for something like this? You know, is there an off season for you? If there is, what does that entail? Just a little bit more of like what goes into your role because it, it sounds like it's all encompassing. It is, but I think our team is, you know, we've grown a lot. Um, people like both of you, um, people like our sales team, Kyle Unruh and Ethan Piotta, who have been with us from the start, uh, now Chase Coley adding on the uh, girls side of things. And then of course we have got a really big operations team. They're the bones of really what makes everything happen here. So it is a lot. Uh, it's a lot of phone calls. Some days it's talking to college coaches and it's fun because you're, you know, helping kids get recruited. Some days it's maybe not so fun. You're dealing with getting facilities booked and helping people with, you know, uh, different tasks. But I would say off season wise for us, uh, when the season wraps up, basically the, the first part of August, you're able to take a little bit of a breath, but then we're back in the camps and ultimately we plan our schedule in August for the next year. So it, it continues to just kind of wrap around. The fall is a little bit lighter. You get to enjoy the football season a little bit and, um, you know, kind of plan for the next year. But it's always, to your point, you're either planning for the next year um, and you got to stay on your toes. At the end of the day, if you're not planning, if you're not recruiting, if you're not, uh, you know, putting on a good performance when it comes to the spring and summer, then ultimately all is for not because you, you have to be able to have all facets ready. So we try to do that. But we've got a great team here at Next Pro and uh, led by many, many people that uh, go well beyond me. So it is, it is far from a, a one-man operation, but, the, you know, it began that way three years ago, and thankfully it is, is not that anymore. For sure. So we're just about 12 days from our first weekend of events. It's super exciting. So, Matt, if you want to share some, some of the things you're most excited for and you're looking forward to this season. I mean, I think for us, uh, we're just really excited about this partnership with uh, Puma and being their grassroots arm for them. And I think as you look at their brand, they're very exciting. They're very uh, innovative. They fit a lot of the things that we want to be and that we have been. So for us, I think it's just uh, continuing to be who we've always been, be innovative. Um, there are several things we're rolling out this year that we're very, very excited about. 
But ultimately in 12 days, uh, I, I think I'm most excited for people to see a few things. One, the brand that Puma is, because I truly believe they have a great product that's only continuing to grow in the space and going to be a power for a long time in basketball. They started back in 1973 um, with our good man Clyde, and, and they've obviously taken a hiatus for a little bit and then come back here over the last several years with, with a really big boom. So we're excited to be with them. And I think the other part is I'm always excited to see our players. For those of you that have watched the documentary that uh, John Hoyer put together, that's absolutely phenomenal on our YouTube channel, episode one, two, and three. I know we're all out and episode four is coming soon. If you look at you know just that, it truly shows there are some life-changing moments that were created from this circuit. And I think this year there's only going to be even more. And that ultimately, I think not just for me, I think for all of our staff, it's what gets us out of bed and wakes us up with excitement because we truly are impacting lives, whether it's the kid that didn't have an offer at all and he's going to go to college now for free at a D2 and get an opportunity, or, or whether it's the kid that, you know, like an Asa Newell who's going to Georgia and has obviously a very historic high school season, not just in the grassroots world, but obviously with Montverde. Th- those are the kids everybody, of course, loves to watch. Everybody wants to be around. And Asa is an awesome young man. We've been blessed to be around some great people. I think this year for us, we're going to continue to expand our ranked player, you know, just uh, the team around that. But also there's going to be another Lane Taylor. Um, don't know who that is. And I think that's a really intriguing part of who is the next guy to burst onto the scene. Now, whether they'll be able to do exactly what Lane did or not, we'll have to see. But I, I definitely am excited to see who the next guys are. They're going to burst onto the scene. Oh, absolutely. That that sounds exciting. That's something to look forward to for sure. Um, speaking of exposure, you know, definitely it's always a good thing to give um, kids, special kids basketball this opportunity to, you know, be highlighted, to have these chances, like you said, for college and other circuits do much of the same. But what I want to take a moment here is highlight what Next Pro brings to the table in terms of benefits for these players, for these teams to really kind of give them um, that light. I think you have to start with the college coaches. No circuit is a circuit without college coaches at live periods. There's there's obviously a bunch of different circuits, whether they're independent or in our case, a shoe circuit with Puma. Um, there's, a, there's less shoe circuits. There's only four. But at the same time, as you look through it, there are some good independent options, but they're becoming less and less, I think, just because the reality more shoe circuits and more college coaches congregating in certain places. College wow. coaches can only go so many places, and there's three live periods. To me, what sets us apart are the live periods and the coaches that we have. Um, We've got a great relationship with Juco Advocate. We will continue that on this year. Last year in Houston alone, there it was 300 deep on one court, Uh, something that uh, I've only seen at one other event, uh, which was Nike Peach Jam. Uh, I'm okay with giving them some love. They obviously have a great event. Everybody knows that they're definitely a powerful organization and grassroots. And we're ultimately looking to provide those opportunities as best as we can. So I think you have to start with the college coaching landscape and being able to get coaches to the gym, which we were able to do a year ago. And I firmly believe we'll only have more uh, with the relationship with Puma and how we've grown as a circuit in this calendar year. And then from there, we've got a lot of fun things, right? Media is huge for us. Uh, things such as the show, things such as our, our social media team, um, that those guys do an awesome job. You've got Aiden who does graphics, John who leads on the video. We have the documentary from a year ago. We'll have another one this year. And, and it just kind of steamrolls to where it may be the 50-second highlight tape that we put out a kid that a college coach sees. And I'm not saying that's the offer, but that's the interest, right? And ultimately, that's our job. Get them interested enough. And then our job is to get them to the actual live period events and market our athletes. Once they're at the live period events, I'll say this, and parents, uh, if you're out there, you, I know I get asked a lot, oh, hey, how do I get Johnny recruited or how do I get you know, D recruited? It, it's you got to put them on the right circuit. You have to get them in front of coaches. But ultimately, we will do our job. Our job is going to be done at Next Pro. When, when we start Wichita, that first live period, May 17th through the 19th, you know, D's got to get out there and play well. That, that's, that's where it starts because we can have anybody and everybody there. If D doesn't play well, well, then it's like, you know, yeah. hey. Uh, you got to do that. That that is a part of the equation. We we we're not Houdini, and we can't just uh, you know snap our fingers and and make things happen. But you know you give the kid the opportunity, and that's really what we're about. Absolutely, and I can speak to my my experience last year, and 
during my first live period, there was, I mean, a crowd full of coaches. It was, it was really a surreal experience seeing Coach Calipari and many other great coaches there, which is, I'm sure, a lot of new new members to our next row family. So that'll be exciting to see. Clint yeah. Corbin, of course. I'm definitely looking forward to it, yeah, because – that that's that's really where i'm like live period okay <laughs> and seeing the documentary and showing some love to that it was like it built the excitement anticipation but also like okay from behind the scenes what does that look like so i'm definitely excited for that and like you said it's an opportunity for us to do our job and and and, and highlight that and for the place to perform and all works out for everybody so it sounds like a plan <laughs> absolutely huge shout out to john who did an incredible job and in, that's fine the documentary, so yep and that last definitely question to you if you don't mind um you talked a little bit about the girls' circuit. Is there any other additions that you hope to see over the either this year or the next next few years? Yeah, I think for the girls' circuit, this year is our launching pad, and we're really excited uh, with the programs we have on board. Chase and her leadership on the girls' side has been great. Ultimately, we want to get that to the level that the boys' circuit has climbed to, and, and it's, it does take time. But that being said, we think that with Puma um, and our relationships with them, especially you look at what they've done, Brianna Stewart's got her own shoe. She just won WNBA MVP again. Uh, that's two times for those counting at home. Uh, we've got her camp that's coming up this weekend, which is going to be really awesome, the Stewie 30 camp that we're involved with and help running. And I think as we build out, it's going to be uh, a, a task of ours to make it great, just like the boys has uh, you know, come to that level to where you've got sponsored teams, you've got live period events with a ton of college coaches, and of course, you've got a ton of Puma gear on those young ladies uh, and wearing the Stewie. Uh, they'll be wearing the Stewie shoe this year and, and, and continuing to do that as we build that out as it's very important to be connected uh, with our brand, of course. Absolutely. All right, uh, Matt, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come talk with us. Yeah. Thank you again. Yeah, happy to. And uh, just a reminder to those teams out there that are playing in 12 days. Hey, you better show up and you better play because all the games count. <laughs> and if you start, start off 0-4, boy, it's tough to catch up. So uh, just keep battling. And I know it's early, but it's going to be fun to get that season started here pretty soon. Absolutely. We're all looking forward to it. Definitely. Thank you again for coming on. I uh, look forward to seeing you here on future shows for sure. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right, Shaka, all right, we got uh, slate. <laughs> right, I know. I'm excited. We've got two more special guests. Uh, we've got our two team directors, Ethan Piotta, probably the worst trooper in the company, and then also the OG. <laughs> um, these guys are going to come give some insight about what they do on a day-to-day -day basis because now they've got super busy schedule. <laughs> okay. You're going to introduce me like that, man? That's crazy. <laughs> Marco, Marco. <laughs> hey, well, thank you for coming on, uh, Ethan. Definitely appreciate you. We'll talk about your, your balling skills a little bit later, hopefully. <laughs> um, but the same question <laughs> that we've asked everyone just to start. Well, just Matt is like to learn more about you, especially myself meeting you here for the first time. Like, um, how how did you kind of get this into your career? I know that you've had, you know, coming to where you are now, um, as a director from a scout, can you give some more background um, as to your just experience in general in basketball? Yeah, I mean, so I really throughout college, I I went to school at Arizona State University. I started in 2019 there, and um, I went to school with the hope of earning a sports journalism degree. And I remember probably two months into school, I was sent out on an assignment to cover like a water polo game or something like that and I came back and I was kind of just like man I played basketball my whole life I got a passion for basketball I, I need to work in basketball I need to find my way back into the space you know whether whatever opportunity it is I'll take it I'll grind from the ground up and literally a week after I kind of made that proclamation in my head I guess you could say uh COVID hit I went home I used to do just basically freelance scouting reports on lower end NBA draft prospects. I worked for a couple of different agencies and did a little bit of scouting work for a few overseas team, all freelance stuff. Um, fast forward about two years, I was working at a cheesesteak job and I don't even know if I've even told Matt this story, but Next Pro had just begun to launch as a company. Um, 
a couple weeks prior to that. And I kind of got linked to the job. Someone sent it my, my way. And ultimately I, I met Matt a few weeks later and just took a chance on kind of what we were building and, and what we were doing. And now, now I'm here, you know, I think this is now a year three that I've been with the company and it's been awesome to see kind of what we built from the ground up to, you know, now obviously being like Matt said, Puma's arm uh, in grassroots basketball and truthfully kind of building that side of it up. So Kyle, like Ethan, you've, you've been with the company since the start. So do you want to tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got to this point? Yeah, sure. Um, so I played basketball in college, uh, you know, with Bob Cousy. Um, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, I, was like I, 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 realize, I realize I look like I might have played that long ago. But, uh, oh man! But no, I, I played way back in the day, and then, um, and then I, I, I have six children. Two of them are boys, and I jumped in with them and and did AAU basketball and trained them and. Uh, those guys played all the way through to long careers overseas in Europe. One's still, one's active over there still, one's retired. Um, and and then I, I started a club, um, I don't know, 10 years ago. Um, that's how I met Matt. Uh, he was doing events and, and our, our program was going to some of his events. And uh, it came time for me to relocate, to be closer to family and uh, he reached out since I wasn't going to be on the program side, club side anymore. He reached out and asked if, if I had any interest in kind of using my network and uh, experience and helping build Next Pro, and um, and I jumped on that, and kind of the rest is history. Wow, that is that is really really cool. Um, I I guess next question I I'll start with you, Kyle. Is you know can you kind of describe? I mean, so you. Obviously, you and Ethan are both directors, but scouting experience, you both still scout. Kind of how do you manage the balance of that between all the work that you do on the director's side, which I'm curious to obviously learn more about, but also with the scouting background that you both have had at different points in your basketball career? How do you kind of strike that balance between, all right, I'm in, you know, I'm running these things, but also I got to take a look at this kid. I got to see what's going on over here. Yeah. Well, I, I for me, I, you know, I, I love the game. I'm a mission minded and mission driven person. And um, my favorite thing to do on weekends is just pull kids aside after the games and spend some time with them and get to know them a little bit and um, kind of how their recruiting's going, build a relationship um, that, that extends, you know, beyond that weekend uh, that, that will continue in touch and uh, use, use some of my resources and network to just help generate some recruiting traction for me. It truly is what it is about to try and help kids generate recruiting traction in the hopes that some offers might come their way. And I think we all know that uh, being able to go to college and secure a college degree can can be life changing. So um, so that's really what drives me. Wow, thank you. Um, Ethan. Yeah, Ethan, you wanna go share a little bit about your, Yeah, what we've talked about your experience as a scout, but how's that changing? Yeah, I think it's it's pretty unique in the way that we've kind of built this thing out, right? Because when you look at a circuit like a Nike or Adidas or an Under Armour, um, obviously all three great platforms, but those are circuits that are primarily operated by people with some sort of a shoe background. For Matt, for myself, for Kyle, um, exactly what Kyle alluded to, we're basketball people, I think, at heart. Um, so for us to be able to kind of bridge the gap and now obviously the addition of chase to further exemplifies that on our girl side um but you know there's one thing to bring a program in and there's a second to truly honor your word and your commitment to that program and i think for me um i find uh, a lot of fulfillment and just going around and you know it might it's it's not terribly difficult work for me to take a picture of a kid and 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 write up what he's doing well on the floor if he's having a really good game. Um, but for that kid, you never know what that singular singular post can do for him and for his life. Literally, you know, obviously, like Matt said when he was talking, it's not going to be, hey, I, Ethan takes a picture of a kid, he writes up something on social media, he's getting an offer from that. But it could be the launching pad to him eventually getting his first Division One offer, or Division Two, NAIA, JUCO, whatever it is. Um, so, I, you know, 
obviously now Kyle and I, I think have a lot on our plate in terms of putting this thing together and, and, and managing kind of the great relationships that we've built with these programs from across the country. But there's a lot of value in using our basketball background to being hands on and seeing us in the gym and firsthand helping these kids out along with the rest of our great scout team that we've now built um, on our end. So. Absolutely. And Ethan, you talked about how you have a lot on your plate. And I'm, I sure definitely understand that. But um, can you talk about a little bit about your conversations that you have with these program directors in terms of how you know what teams to reach out to? How do you find them and other things like that? I know the fans are curious. Yeah, I mean, we we built out a pretty detailed and vetted out application process. Um, and we've kind of perfected, I guess you could say, year after year. And this year was definitely a, probably the most organized, I could, guess you could say, Kyle, we were in terms of putting that application process together and getting, you know, a multitude of applications that came in from across the country. I don't know what our final total of applications that came in was, but I'd wager to say it was somewhere between 700 to 900 applications that it felt like we got, if not more, from programs across the country. Um, I know on my end, for the programs that came through and made sense, uh, it was a point of emphasis for me to have a phone conversation with those people. And I truthfully believe this, but you can give me the most talented team in America that's coming on our circuit and is going to make us better. But I find just as much value, if not even more value, in just working with the right people the right directors, the right coaching staffs, um, the right parents, the right kids, you know, they've got to align with our vision and, and what our company is all about as well. Because if those th two things don't align, then it's not going to work out. For sure. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Um, and speaking of, you said this like relationships you have with these program directors. Um, and obviously we already talked about the balance between both d the directing job that y'all both do and, and scouting. But I guess Kyle, what I, Kind of want to know, and Ethan, of course, you as well. Um, what is again my favorite question? A day in the life for you? I mean, obviously, we're ramping up to like the crazy season. I suppose would be the best way I can describe it, not knowing. But between all the events and the traveling and the com constant communication, I'm sure you have with directors. In addition to, like you said, scouting games and you know pulling kids aside, can you kind of give a little context behind the scenes as to um, what it is that you would normally do in what I imagine is a pretty long day? Yeah, we're, we're on the phone a lot, and it kind of depends on uh, the time of year. So in the fall, um, we're mostly selling the circuit. And so we're identifying those programs that we think would be good fits. We're proactively doing that um, a lot, uh, reactively a little bit. Um, but we're trying to identify uh, top-level programs that we think would be a good fit into our into our organization. And we're just on the phone a lot. So that's what happens probably through January. Um, we begin to kind of secure who's going to be on that circuit uh, by January. And then we're just starting to help them, you know, get their gear ordered and, and uh, help, help recruit their rosters. I've been on a handful of phone calls where I'm, tell, I'm talking to a program director that's uh, got a kid or a family on the line where we're trying to help them understand the value that they're going to get from playing on our circuit. So we're helping them recruit a handful, you know, a lot of the time. Um, once the season starts, we'll be settling in, doing a little bit more uh, scouting. and um, But we'll also be managing all of our programs. I mean, Ethan and I, we each probably have, oh, between 140 and 150 programs, which translates to somewhere between four and 500 teams for each of us. Um, and so there, there's just a lot of questions that they'll have, a lot of interaction. Um, and we're, we're kind of their go-to to get their questions answered and, and to get what they need uh, to be able to, you know, have success and navigate this circuit. Appreciate that. Absolutely. Ethan, I think you're probably the perfect guy to ask this question too, but um, could you expand on the actual structure and the formatting of the circuit? Because admittedly, it is a bit confusing, even for me of having been here a full year now. And just talk about like the ranking system and how to qualify for the year end finals and everything's along those lines. Yeah. Um, we have the pro 16, which is obviously our sponsored level of teams from across the country. And then we have seven different tiers to our next division. Um, next is our unsponsored level. We have two levels to our circuit, but it's one league. 
Um, we kind of pride ourselves on that. So what goes into our ranking system is an ELO power rating system that I've developed. It's 65% weighted onto your wins and losses record. It's 30% weighted onto your strength of schedule that you play throughout the year, which is a variable that's calculated between those set tiers. Um, you know, like I mentioned, Pro 16 and then one through seven of next. And then 5% of it that goes into it is your point differential. So like Matt mentioned, when you step on the floor, every single game matters. It's a 16 game sample size that teams have in the spring with us um, that we take into account, ultimately leading up initially at least in july to our first july live period in phoenix which is our 16 pro 16 teams from 15 to 17 u in a bracket uh along with our 16 best next teams from 15 to 17 u based on how they did in that 16 game sample size referencing um the algorithm and the variables that i've created uh which is pretty unique it's it's kind of first of its kind i guess you can say where you have 32 teams half of um, you know, one half of the league, the other half of the league that are all competing in the same bracket. And ultimately, that's where you see a ton of college opportunities that are coming from, you know, kids that necessarily might not have been seen as heavily as they were before stepping on the floor with a bunch of four and five star recruits and playing their tail off in front of coaches and ultimately earning, you know, life changing opportunities from that. Most definitely. Um, and you kind of touched a little bit on, like you said, the, the ranking system. Uh, can you kind of go into a little bit more the dynamic between Next Pro as itself and the Pro 16? Um, and this is something I'm curious about. I watched documentary and have a somewhat understanding, like base level understanding of it, but how often these these two leagues kind of will compete against each other or two. I don't yeah. know the way I'm describing it correctly. Yeah, <laughs> we'll compete against right. each other. Um, can you just share more about that yeah i'm stumbling my way through the question yeah <laughs> i guess you could say it's less honestly corbin of two leagues and maybe more so i refer to it as two levels um gotcha. and the pro 16 and our next teams i believe totaled 397 games against each other last year um which is a pretty staggering amount it's far more far more than any other circuit um we've kind of documented that um but ultimately it's what's I think attracted so many top independent, formerly independent um, programs that have come from, you know, really good backgrounds to our circuit is just the uh, inclusivity and the parity between the two levels to our league. Those two, you know, those two levels compete regularly and, and ultimately um, you see it most apparently when we, when we get to the finals, the most important event of the year in July in front of, you know, thousands of college coaches for sure appreciate that absolutely and kyle tell us a little bit about how this is obviously a huge opportunity for next teams who get to see and play against these nationally recruited kids from all across the country so talk to us about how different it is with next pro compared to others maybe shoot circuits that we provide such an opportunity for these next teams that are on obviously maybe a slightly lower level but they get the opportunity to and with big guys. Yeah, you know, one of the things that all the program directors heard when, when uh, Ethan and I reached out and talked to them about our format and our structure was um, we, really, we really have, to this point, been able to eliminate politics and favoritism and that sort of thing. And we just tell them, if you earn it, we're going to reward you. If, if, you have, if you have good success based on you know, the metrics that Ethan uses to put teams in rankings, um, you're going to have opportunities to play against those Pro 16 teams. And so it's not it's not we're giving you games against Pro 16 just because you're on our circuit. No, if you earn right by performing well and getting results, then you're going to get opportunities to play against those Pro 16 teams. And we saw more than just a few times that those, those – uh, uh, next level teams were able to go in and, and get some upsets. Um, uh, West Virginia Gold, for example, uh, those guys made it all the way to the finals of the Pro 16 championships as a next team in that 16 and under division. Uh, and they're going to play in the Pro 16 this year. Uh, they're going to be a Pro 16 team because they earned that right to be able to do that by performing well in the next circuit. And um, I think we'll probably talk later about how 
um, we're able to offer that. Um, but we're not just giving teams opportunities to play against Pro 16 or be in the Pro 16 just because uh, they want it or they convince us they have a good player. Uh, you got to earn it in this in this circuit. Um, but rest assured, if you do earn it, we're going to give you and reward that by giving you some of those opportunities. I like that for sure. Um, and speaking of opportunities, I, I definitely like to learn more. I mean, um, I could throw those over to Ethan. Kyle, you can answer as well. Um, just the different coverage opportunities that kids will give with next pro. I mean, obviously, you know, we're starting this show and I know there's extensive scouting and writing that's done, but can you kind of go a little bit more into the benefit of having that coverage and what that consists of for the kids in the circuit? Right, exactly. And it starts with, you know, things like this show, which you guys are obviously, I mean, this is, this is an amazing thing for us that I think is going to do really, really good things for, for this part of our company. But um, you look at a Nike or Adidas or Under Armour and you go to those tournaments, the reality is there's probably five to 10, maybe 15 of the best kids getting covered at those events. And it's by national media members. Um, so the coverage kind of varies, you know, you can be having a really good tournament at one of those events and there's next to no guarantee that you are going to be covered and kind of highlighted for, um, for your performance there. For us having a, a scout team, having a, a dedicated media team on hand to create these mixtapes for kids, um, write-ups on social media, write-ups on nextprohoops.com, um, player of the game photos, uh, you know, kind of deeper talks on where their recruitment is. Uh, it's a hands-on experience. And that coverage, again, I'll allude back to it, but that coverage is super important. Obviously, from our end, what we'll do is we'll bring college coaches into the building. We can guarantee that for our teams. But secondly, too, we're, we're guaranteeing all of our teams. And I know Kyle's told his teams this, and I continue to harp on it with mine, but we're going to take care of you from a coverage standpoint. It's important to us. It matters to us. Um, you know, having having our teams in the gym, we want to make their experience worthwhile. And, you know, we can't hold the college coach's hand and make them go sit and watch um, their kid play, but we can do our best on our end to get the word out on them from a social media standpoint. Hey guys, one of the things I want to add real quick, um, as it relates to our rankings is, um, you know, every, I don't know, Ethan, what is it? Monday night, Tuesday morning, you can go in and look at the rankings because we shuffled them. Uh, and they change uh, by Monday or Tuesday every from week. The previous, yeah, from the previous weekend. And so it actually is a pretty fun exercise for all the kids that are involved. Whether they even play that weekend or not, their ranking's probably going to move because the teams around them did play, and they're, and they're causing the rankings to move. So literally every single week, you can go in and see uh, how the rankings have shifted. Sometimes you've been relegated – up or down a tier like you may be a tier two team have a rough weekend and you're playing in tier three the next time you're out or or the opposite you may be a tier three team and you have a great weekend and you're playing a tier two schedule you know going forward and so it adds some excitement to the circuit because you literally whether you're a tier six team or a tier two team you can kind of follow your progress and see that reason that that every game matters because if if you beat a team that you're supposed to beat by just a little, that could penalize you. Um, mm. So, so every game matters. Every minute of every game matters. It's it's cool in the sense that, well, you really gotta you really gotta be ready to get your four games in and play at a high level, uh, so you can improve that ranking and not damage it. Right. I, I think I'll add to that too. Um, Nebraska is a super uh, just another super innovative thing that we've done as a company that again no other shoe circuit can really claim to have and that's a direct path that's a direct pathway to playing your way into a sponsorship um i tell teams this all the time kyle does the same but like everybody thinks that they should be sponsored we give you the pathway to where hey where hey, you can go out and directly earn it and that's off strictly winning and losing that's at the end of the year july 26 28th in nebraska we'll have our top 125 next teams from 15 to 17 you competing in our championship bracket there um the winner of our 16 and our 15 u division will become um a pro 16 team by designation with us for the following season and we saw this happen last year as well with a couple of our programs that did it the right way came from um, the next side of things and are now enjoying the benefits of being a pro 16 team for this, uh, this upcoming year. 
So I think that's really cool. You know, where we're saying, hey, look, you can take all of our decision making out of it. We've tried to eliminate politics as much as possible. But at the end of the day, we have to, uh, you know, make moves that are the best possible for us as a circuit, best possible for us as a company. Um, but you can eliminate everyone's decision making by going out there and winning. I think that's something that not only in youth basketball and in shoe circuits is missing, but I think, you know, it's an element in youth sports in general that isn't as present as it used to be. Um, the importance of winning and losing games. Um, it adds just, a, a, I think, a, another competitive layer to every single event that we have throughout the year. So when you're going to Fort Collins, Colorado, um, you know, you're not going in and, and you're mailing in four games and, and getting out of there. Every game is going to matter. Every minute, like Kyle said, is going to matter. Yeah, so obviously there is a lot at stake. But uh, Kyle, could you talk a little bit about who exactly will be participating, what age groups, and how, how that will work exactly? Yeah, so um, on the boys' side, we have uh, we have age divisions from fifth grade through eleventh grade. Um, fifth through eighth, we can we 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 tab them as our middle school uh, age divisions, uh, and then ninth or fifteen and under twenty twenty sevens. Um, ninth through eleventh will be our high school divisions, um, and they'll play you know amongst themselves and. Uh, the rankings will be accordingly, you know, you'll, you'll go to our website and look up the 2025 rankings and see all the teams that are playing on our 2025 age division and, and see them ranked there. Um, and we're grade based. So you know, it doesn't really matter. You know, if, if you're, if you're a 2025 kid, you're going to play in the 2025 circuit. Um, we get a lot of questions about that, but, but we're grade based uh, and in all our age divisions. And so, that that's how it works. The girls is a little different, but I think you got Chase coming on. All I'd heard talk about that uh, in terms of what divisions they have, but that that's how it works on the guys side. I like it for sure. And then um, as far as the tournament format, um, Kyle, how exactly does that work? Um, I mean, I get kind of like okay, where you're assigned, and where you're playing, but is that kind of more um, insight as to what that looks like? If you could share, yeah. Anything? Yeah, so in the spring, all of our events are four-game showcase. So you actually know who you're playing before you even leave town. Uh, we'll have the schedule up, and you'll have your four games and your times and what court and all that sort of thing. And as Ethan had already alluded to, you're building a resume um, during during the spring of a of a 16-game sample size. And so those 16 games – can dictate where you're ranked. They can dictate whether you get in, get invited to play at the Pro 16 Finals. They dictate what seeds you'll get at the next Finals at the end of July. Uh, and so everything you do in the spring makes a difference to what our our elite tournaments and our and our showcase uh, tournaments that we run in July. Uh, how that impacts you know where you're seated or whether you're invited or that sort of thing. So it's all showcase in the spring. Um, no brackets, and then everything's uh, – we end up playing a lot of brackets in July. Okay. Thank you. That, that makes a little more sense for sure. Yeah. So, Ethan, a couple of us have some cool gear on. Can you tell all the parents where, where we can go get – where we can shop the goods? Feeling self-conscious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every single one of our directors has kind of a – I guess you could call it a personal portal that's set up through uh, – BSN and, 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 and exactly how they've gotten their gear. But I know for a fact that Puma hoops um, will be dropping exclusive league products for us and they'll hit stores next week, uh, hoodies, t-shirts, joggers, et cetera. So stay posted for more updates on that, but that's just uh, you know, another really cool benefit to what Puma is, is, is building with us. That's exciting for sure. I cannot wait to get some of that. Um, and my final question, um, and this is what I'll start with Sean Cool about before we started, because I, I guess, will show my basketball ignorance here. But what, what is the game ball? And, and I, I guess maybe just for myself, like, just some insight as to why that's a really good question to ask. <laughs> because um, I was like, oh yeah, basketball, sure. And he's like, Sean Cool's like, nah, it's, it's not. There's more to it. And I'm like, okay. So I'd like to know uh, what is the ball and yeah. the importance of knowing that game ball. Yeah, we've used uh, the rock last year. We'll use it again this year. Um, I, I like the rock. I think it's a good game ball. I, I, I didn't hear a whole lot of complaints about it last year. Um, 
you know, my, there's, there's, you can kind of go back and forth. It depends on, depends on the Hooper, right? Apparently I'm the worst Hooper in the company. So I want to know a lot about, uh, I want to know a lot about game balls or kind of what works for me. The ball's um, ball. I'm with so. you. <laughs> <laughs> well, unlike me, I never even played competitive basketball, but just a fun little question to wrap it up. Uh, what are your go-to moves in a game of pickup? Thank you. That's my I love that one. <laughs> Man, I'm a, I'm a belly bumper and I'm, I'm a, yeah, I'm a belly bumper and I'm backing you in. That's all I can do. <laughs> I love it though. <laughs> Under the rim, under the rim. Old man, old yeah, old man, old man, back you down. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ethan, do you have a move? Yeah. I'm, playing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just <messed> up. <laughs> yeah, I like to, I like to get smaller defenders like Sean Ku on my hip and kind of utilize my back <laughs> and my size to be able to, to shoot over him and, and and create advantage on the floor. So that's kind of what I do. If you're playing against one of our operations people, Justin Matcham, you just got to get out of the way. He's a freight train coming down. Oh, I, he's, yeah. he's gonna he's gonna hey, bully ball you. So, hey Corbin, Corbin, yeah, Corbin. Uh -huh. There, there, there is clearly something brewing here um, that looks like maybe at some point this show might have its own first one-on-one -on -one game. <laughs> I'm here, listen, coverage. Let's go. <laughs> you need that. For sure. Yeah. I, I'm excited for that. No, I'm, I thank you for sharing that. I definitely appreciate um, both of y'all coming on and just giving a lot of insight into, you know, more uh, detail into this and look forward to working with y'all and, and, and seeing y'all more and having on the show here with uh, Sean Kuhn and myself moving forward, hopefully. Awesome. Appreciate what you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us, guys. Of course. All right. All right, Corbin, that was fun. That Make was. sure to learn a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I also learned that your defensive skills might be a little iffy, but that's cool. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm so we got, we got another one. Sorry, yep. So our last guest for, for the show is the best hooper in the company, former high-level basketball player, uh, Chase Coley, who is the director of our girls' circuit, which is a new venture that we're starting with Next Pro this year. So, Chase, thanks for coming on. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome on. Appreciate you joining. Um, I guess I'm going to ask the, the go-to question here. Um. One I'm definitely looking forward to asking here, how did you get into basketball as as your career? Kind of your background in the game, obviously being the best player here, you know, in at least in this in this call is great, but just more about kind of your journey in basketball. Yeah, so I grew up in a basketball family. Um, my dad is from small town in Indiana. He grew up, played there, went to a small NAI school, Grace College. Um but my mom, who was a big time basketball player in Minnesota, she played at the University of Minnesota and then she transferred and played at San Diego State for a while. They both played overseas. She played in France and Australia, I believe. And he played in Germany and Australia and he was over there coaching for a long time. Um, I just I never really had a choice when it came to basketball. I feel like I was just kind of one of those kids who had basketballs in my crib. I had basketball like gear on all the time. Like I just. I come from a family of hoopers. Um, my sister currently plays at the University of Nebraska. I played at the University of Iowa. So we like to laugh and say we're just a Big Ten, Big Ten family. Um, so that's how I got into basketball. I never really planned on making basketball my career. Like I didn't have a huge drive, I guess, to go play in the WNBA, but as like I started to wrap up my college career and I was deciding what I was going to do next. I was um, had a good enough college career where I had the option to go play overseas. So I chose to continue and play for another year. I went and played in Sweden. It was a really awesome experience. I learned a lot. Um, I got to play basketball on someone else's dime and travel around the world. It was great. Um, I, I realized I am a homebody though. I love basketball, but I'm a homebody. So I came home, I loved working with kids. I volunteered and coached at a lot of the schools in Sweden in the area I was in. So I came home to like teach and I knew I wanted to keep doing basketball stuff. So I'd help coach my dad's high school teams. I would train some of the younger girls. My sister's six and a half years younger than me. So at the time I got to like work with her and all of her friends and kids she grew up with. So that was a really fun experience. Um, I was approached um, in the fall of last year by Kyle and Matt, because Kyle knows my dad through um, other basketball ventures. You know, directors are always talking to each other. So um, Matt let me know that 
uh, like he explained to me kind of how the boys side of the circuit was set up and that Puma had approached him and was ready to kick off the girls side. So they were looking for a director, love, like very passionate about working with like young student athletes specifically and kicking off the girls side, uh, looking into a little more about how Puma's really kind of like stepped in and trying to like elevate the women's game and really highlight the women that are really successful basketball players out there right now. So it just seemed like a great opportunity and I'm, I've been having a blast ever since. I love that for sure. So it sounds like a relatively new role to you. So could you expand a little about, about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and kind of how you talked about how Matt and Kyle kind of found you, but what has this opportunity meant to you so far? Um, it's been amazing. I have watched my dad since, I mean, he's been coaching since I was a, like a little girl. I used to run around the gyms with his, his older high school girls. So I've always been in the gym around girls that are just like passionate, athletic, driven. And some of them like might not necessarily have the skill level to play at these top schools, but my dad never let them get down about that because there's so many opportunities for you to go play at like there's not just power five schools out there, there's D2s, D3s, NAIAs. But if you are passionate about the game and you wanna go play in school and you you put in the effort, I'm gonna put in all my effort on my end um, and give you all the tools that I have. And I'm, I'm gonna help you find a school to get into. Cause um, kind of like Kyle said earlier, like at the end of the day, that's it's a, it can be a life-changing opportunity to go get school paid for and walk out with a degree. So I'm just, really passionate about if a kid wants to go play in school and they're willing to put in the time and effort i want to put in the equal amount of time and effort and help them find a good opportunity for them wow yeah no that's really cool and inspiring just know you know for these kids in the circuit hey whatever i put in i have someone that's going to match that and really work with me for that common goal so that's really really neat um again with this being you know a, a brand new side. What are you personally most looking forward to? You know, whether it's the events, behind the scenes, just a little bit more of, of your excitement and your specific thing that you're like, you know what, like, yeah, let's let's get it, you know? Yeah, so it's our first year. So, I mean, similar to Kyle and Ethan, I'm on the girl side, just like having a lot of phone conversations with my directors, checking in on them, um, kind of helping facilitate them ordering their gear, um, adjusting their schedules need be, answering questions about um, what the circuit's gonna look like this year. Because it's our first year, it wasn't like, I, I didn't have any like, look at this is what we did last year. It was a lot of conversations on planning for the future and what our vision was and kind of being able to use the boy side as an example, um, as a glimpse of kind of where we're aiming to go with the circuit. Um, so it's been a lot of a lot of the conversations, even like also Ethan said, it's just like working with program directors who are just good people, good families, good kids that have a same aligned vision of what we're doing over here. Um, after talking to all my coaches, like I, I have a lot of teams down here in Texas. I just moved to Houston. Um, they've been super awesome. I've gotten to go hang out with some of them a few times. I took a couple out to dinner, including my dad this last weekend. So that was fun. And um, I've even like hopped on the phone with some of their kids and stuff. I'm really mostly excited to meet all the girls. Like, I think we've got some really talented girls on the circuit, but we've also got a lot of girls with a lot of character. I've seen some of them on social media as we follow them and they're following our account back, um, especially on Instagram. They just like, there's a lot of different personalities. And I think that's one thing that I loved about basketball so much. Like I'm, I'm 6'3". I was pretty good. Like playing the game is super fun, but like, this past summer, I was in one of my AAU teammates' weddings. Like, that was my family. It was so fun. It was to, like, find and make those connections. So I'm really excited just to meet the girls and give all these players and families, like, a really fun basketball experience, like, with memories that are they're going to remember forever. Definitely. So this obviously is very new to us. Um, and this is your first year. So what are some of your goals, not only for this season, but going forward over the next maybe few years? Yeah, just goals for the circuit this year. Um, in our first year, we've got some, we're not doing any live periods. We've got um, six stops this upcoming summer. Um, we're still planning kind of what the following summer 2025 is going to look like, but just continuing to bring in high level programs, high level kids, um, people that want to do it the right way and whose visions align with ours. Um, 
I think building this circuit up is going to be really fun. I think we've got some really great talent on it this year. And I think we're only going to continue to grow um, over the next few years and just like just getting these kids, like having a fun experience, getting, making sure like we have, like we've got phenomenal media coverage at all of our events. So just like getting these kids names out there um, and like getting coaches in the gym. I've, you know, one thing that's been so like the one thing that got me really, really excited when I first started this job, like, you know, when you start a new job and like, you're, you're kind of feeling out the water, you're trying to be comfortable, like what, like, and then certain things happen and it just clicks and it's exciting. And you're like, whoa, we're really doing something. Like I started having um, smaller NAIA D3 coaches reaching out to me randomly, just like, hey, like I've heard the buzz about this. Like, I'm excited about it. Can you let me know when some of your tournament stops are? Like, I'm like, okay, we're really like picking up traction. Like we've got, we pulled some really good kids into the league, some really good programs. People are hearing about it. Like we're going to be talked about. I think we're going to surprise a lot of people and I'm excited about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely feel that for sure. I'm piggybacking off of, Shanku's question and your answer. Um, how cool is it to kind of be like the main mover and shaker here and in increasing the exposure of some really talented women in the circuit? Um, and, and just kind of like you said, kind of moving that forward and and giving them these opportunities. I mean, it's it's super exciting. Like I was in these kids' position. Um, I think it's really, I mean, not to toot my own horn, but it is really fun to have like another female to look up to. Like, I love that there's more women coming into this space. I have a lot of program directors. Um that played all growing up, played in college, played overseas. It's really fun to talk to them. I feel like we have a lot in common. We can relate could be because we've lived this experience. So I think that's one thing that's really exciting is just like really highlighting the women's game. And like, I'm, I played at the University of Iowa. I'm a huge Hawkeye fan seeing like what women like Caitlin Clark are doing for the game as well. Just, I think women's basketball is really like over the last few years really put itself on the map and established itself like like we're not just girls that play basketball, like we're hoopers too. So I think that's been really fun to see and be a part of. Absolutely. So obviously Kyle mentioned that the girls circuit is structured a little bit differently from the boys. So could you tell us a little bit about the structure and the formatting in terms of the age, age divisions and stuff like that? Yeah, so for the girls this year, um, we do six through 12th. So six through eighth grade, 12U to 14U, that's our middle school division. Um, and then 15U to 17U, that's our high school. Um, differs from the boys a bit in this first year. Uh, we chose in this first year not to do. Um, we don't have any sponsored teams in the leagues. That's how we differ right now. So everyone's playing on one even playing field this first year. Um, in the following year, we're going to look to add that Pro 16 League as well. Um, but in the first year, we kind of wanted to just um, like build, build out a strong circuit, pull in some good programs and then just continue to elevate from there. For sure. Um, I'm going to let Shanku get the last question here. My last question is going to steal the question that Shanku asked from the last segment, which is, I mean, we talked about go-to moves and defense or lack thereof, but um, what is yours? I mean, you've obviously played all over at the highest level, you know, I, you know, I don't think it's, it's asking for like a full scout report to kind of get your, your, your go-to move that, you know, pick up. Um, I'm a, I'm a big shot blocker. That's my favorite part of the game. Like okay. <laughs> that's, that's my favorite thing to do. I'll go chase down any anybody's shot and block it. But my dad says my game is very similar to Tim Duncan, Mr. Fundamental. I guess that's Miss Fundamental. But I like in the post just just a quick step out, little little jump shot. I love the 15 foot jump shot. I love mid range game. So that's solid. That's is it a banker? Is hmm. it a bank shot, or you just try to go straight at net? Nothing but net. Money. Nothing but net. Okay. Go check it out. Go check it out. I love it. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shanko, all you. <laughs> all right, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate you taking the time. But uh, I'm super excited to see this girls' circuit, especially Blossom, not only this season, but in the future. So we're excited to see what you do. Yeah, I'm super excited. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, really Thanks appreciate it. Thank you. Wow. This what a show, <laughs> man. We this was fun. Um, I, I first before we even kind of go into next week, Shanko, I just want to thank um Matt, Ethan, Kyle, and of course Chase for their time, you know, and their insight experiences. We really appreciate that. Uh, really think this was a good 
um, intro into Next Pro for anyone listening, uh, definitely for myself, and just what to expect moving forward. Uh, but speaking of moving forward, Shanku, let, let the good folks know what we got coming up here uh, for our next show next week. Absolutely. So in the future, not only next week, but going forward, we're planning to do a show, live show, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. And during the show, both of us will be attending all the events. So we'll be talking about players, prospects. We'll be breaking down some film. We'll be doing some different type of coverages. We'll be bringing players on for interviews. So I'm super excited for the future of this show. Oh, yeah. I'm pumped. I can't wait to get started. I mean, we just finished one, but we got many more to come. Um, but, yeah, we got plenty of time to talk about all that and more starting next week and for the weeks to come. But, listen, y'all, this has been a blast. Uh, we are signing off for Shanku, for myself. We are Frosty. Y'all stay Frosty, and we'll talk to y'all next week. All right, y'all. Peace.